everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Today we are going to play around with a cold process technique for creating variegated yarn that I recently did in a Leave No Dye Behind video. But I wanted to see if this is something that I can do to maybe create two skeins of yarn that feel like they're the same colorway. And we're going to approach this in two different ways and it should be a lot of fun. But before we go start talking about colors, I want to give a huge happy birthday to today's lab partner, Laura. Laura, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And I know your birthday's tomorrow, but I hope it's going to be a really, really good one and that you'll love the yarn I'm going to dye for you. Like me, Laura's favorite color is purple. And so I thought that it would be fun to create a purpley kind of colorway. And so I pulled some blues. I have some Caribbean blue, a tiny bit of frozen, a tiny bit of dark navy. I also have technically two different stocks of some Cabernet, and so I brought both of those in case we want it. For pinks, I brought some fluorescent fuchsia and some purple pop. And all of these dyes are 1% stock solutions, except for the fluorescent fuchsia, which I believe is a about a 0.9% stock solution. And of these colors, the ones that are sort of near the dregs may also no longer be 1% because sometimes if there's some dye that crashes out and settles, once you get to the bottom of the bottle, it can occasionally be more potent than it was originally when it mixed. And so now we're gonna go portion some of these dyes into cups that we can then use. Today we are gonna dye some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. And I've added some removable nylon zip ties onto the yarn and I've been pre-soaking it in plain tap water for a couple of hours. If you wanna learn more about any of the dyes, tools, and equipment that I use in my videos, I do have tons of links and affiliate links down in the video description uh, that can help you get the exact supplies that I use in my videos so you could try to recreate them at home. I realize it makes more sense to set up the dye baths before pouring dye into cups and that way there's less of a uh, spill risk. But in each of these two plastic shoe boxes, I have eight cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm starting with a lot more acid than I might ordinarily use because some of these colors we have are fluorescent and I am gonna want the colors to start striking a bit as we add them on. Uh, and we will be blending them on here eventually. The plan is gonna be to pour the dye on, let it sit uh, for 10 minutes or so, and then we'll move the yarn around and it'll give us sort of a soft variegated type colorway. Uh, now, I'm sort of adding these in and sort of scrunching them on their side. There is enough water in here so that way the yarn is sort of free floating, which means that any dye we add on should be able to go through multiple layers on the yarn. Uh, later on, we'll do a set where we have 200 grams of yarn in one of these containers, and so it'll be more crowded. But I figured we'd do this two different ways and just see which we like better. But I'm gonna try to treat these two skeins as similarly as possible. We started with a little bit of our frozen navy purple pop, and Cabernet. And the way I'm going to do this is by applying the dye with some syringes. Uh, and this way I can do approximately the same amount of each color on each yarn. And so even, that's a little bit of frozen, about three milliliters. And so even if as we add the dye into the yarn, it's not laid out exactly the same, we will be going for something similar. Now, I also want to acknowledge that this is not quite the same as me pouring dye on, uh, but sort of doing the best that I can. All right, let's do the navy sort of like here-ish. That was five milliliters of Dharma's dark navy. And we may have some like particulates in there. And there will be some differences, but those differences may not be that extreme. Okay, so of this color, I have a little bit left, maybe like one and a half milliliters left, so I'm gonna add about half of this on one and the other half on the other. I'm doing my best to kind of treat them the same. 
and already I can kind of see on the side some of the color going down. I'll show what the sides look like uh, towards the end. All right, let's do another deep color and that will be our Cabernet. And I have a lot more of this dye. And so, who we could do a larger volume. Yeah, maybe this is one where instead of using the syringe, it's worth me using a graduated cylinder to pour. Or actually, I can use a tiny little cup. And we'll take the rest of this and then we'll see how much we think we have. Okay, so maybe about 45 milliliters total. And so let's do about 20 milliliters. I suppose something else I should remember as I'm thinking about this and therefore changing my mind again <laughs> is that there's only 100 grams of yarn in each of these and Cabernet is a color that goes a long way. So I want to keep that in mind and instead we're gonna go lighter with our Cabernet and just do five milliliters, which on its own is going to bring a lot of color into our yarn. Uh, I think that this would be too much to like make a true kind of pastel. And so <laughs> I'm glad I edited myself there. Now I'm keeping track of these proportions because maybe we would uh, do something similar in the future, but it's also just pretty fun. Okay, with the purple pop, we also have a fair amount of this. And so I do want to do a bit. Ooh, that was like a good harsh sort of push there. I'm realizing that the velocity that I add the colors also is going to make a difference a bit in how they spread. Uh, but not that I can do that necessarily intentionally every time. And so I'm going to add another, I think, 10 milliliters of this purple pop. We may or may not do fluorescent fuchsia because purple pop is a fairly pink kind of purple color. But I'm really enjoying this overall pattern that we have setting up here. I think it's fun, but I definitely want more color coverage and I think I'm going to get a cup so we can use some of this Caribbean blue. I have a lot of Caribbean blue. All right, I cleaned out that little beaker and so I think that what I want is to add, I hope I don't regret this, 25 milliliters of the Caribbean blue and ooh, I'm just going to pour sort of there, add some there and here along the top. And so this time we've added a much larger volume. And so, yeah, it might behave a little differently. And I'm going to attempt to do something similar here, which, you know, will be a little bit harder to get those proportions the same, but not impossible. Actually, that looks pretty good. They look pretty well matched. Now, <laughs> how things turn out is absolutely going to depend on how the yarn is scrunched. But overall, when we lift this up to move the yarn around and to distribute the colors all over the yarn, I'm anticipating that we should see something similar. And the nice thing is that if I want to edit the colors at all, that's something that we can still do. We can edit these colors to by adding more pink or something like that if we want to shift it. Uh, and so now I need to set a timer and wait, but I'll show you what the edges look like. So here's one of the back edges and it's possible the dye is only going down sort of around like the edge, but I have a feeling it's doing that more in the center as well. Yeah, over here you can see a hint of some of that Cabernet that seems to be more in the middle than what we have over here. But man, the intensity difference between Frozen and the Caribbean Blue, oh my goodness. But part of the fun of some of this is that I used a bunch of different colors 
And so I've had good success with that in the past. And I think Frozen strikes faster than Caribbean Blue. So we will see. The second round of this, I will probably do similarly. Uh, we will have some color differences. I don't have any more of the Frozen or Navy on hand, but I could grab and pull in some other colors if I really wanted, or I could even rinse out the stock bottle to add a little bit of that color onto the yarn. And we'll play that by ear. But I have a feeling I'm not going to measure the colors we add on the box with two as meticulously as I did here. And the main reason why I was measuring here is so that way I knew I was adding the same amount of dye in each of the containers. So even if the placement is a little off, one isn't going to be extremely more pigmented than the other. And I mean, this is something that would be fairly reproducible for me to do, especially if I'm thinking about some kind of series or something where I dye many, many, many skeins of yarn in the same colorway. But anyway, I'll be back once the timer goes off. It's been 10 minutes and I'm gonna move the yarn. And all I can think is, please don't splash, please don't splash. Oh, cool! There's so much color on the other side. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, is this gonna be like bluish? Ooh, it's gonna be a lot more blue than I think I was anticipating, but I like it. I mean, why am I surprised? I added so much Caribbean blue. But this is like a very muted, pretty kind of blue color with like purple and more like deeper hints. Ooh, that is pretty. I should have thought about my, uh, some of my ratios of colors. I mean, removing the yarn, one of these days, I'm gonna do one of these where I remove the yarn and then I just go steam set it right then instead of putting it all the way in to try to absorb all this color. But this is so, so pretty. Uh, I probably should have realized that it was gonna be more blue, but I don't wanna change it. I mean, part of me, I, there was like a moment of hesitation where I was like, ooh, should I add some fluorescent fuchsia to make it a little bit more purple? But no, I'm leaning into this. And maybe we'll make the next round a little bit more purpley, but whoo! All right, we need lids now. But actually, maybe we'll add a little bit more acid in the meantime. It's amazing how much color does strike uh, so quickly, though. I'm gonna add another two tablespoons of white vinegar to each of these. I believe we're still below a 1% depth of shade overall with all the colors combined, but I have had success with even, did I do a 1% of Caribbean blue? I think I did do a 1% of Caribbean blue and there may have been a little pigment left in, but it did a pretty good job of absorbing with like a cold process like this. So. I'm gonna set these outside for a couple of days and at which point we will steam set the yarn. But let's reset and dye two colors in one pan. Okay, I have another shoebox with four tablespoons of white vinegar and eight cups of water. And this time the container is gonna end up being a little bit more crowded. Uh, I'm gonna add 200 grams of yarn and I'm gonna try to do a similar kind of thing where I sort of scrunch them going in. And oh, I totally have some dye on my hand. <laughs> oh, what did I touch? Um, but that's fine. So things are a little bit more crowded. Now I do have a tiny bit, will this even come out? Tiny bit of some navy. Okay, that's like barely nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of water here because I want some of that pigment on. And I don't mind if we end up with more liquid, but I'm gonna try to pour this at the interface of the two skeins, uh, so that way we get it sort of on both. I do have like this little bit of, I think it probably had a tiny bit of navy and maybe frozen that I think I'll pour on like at the end. Um, I'll do like a leave no dye behind on top of like whatever pastel amounts we have left over but I do want to approximately measure the amount of dye I'm adding. So for example, I just am grabbing 25 milliliters of our Caribbean blue, trying to treat the two skeins pretty similarly. 
Um, but I mean, I think there will be differences. Although I am seeing the dye travel down on both of them, so that's pretty good. And let's see, how much purple pop do I have? Okay, about 10 milliliters of the purple pop. Let's bring this up to about 20 milliliters of the fluorescent fuchsia here. Um, so 30 milliliters of these pink colors total. And let's do like a sort of V shaped thing there. And maybe We'll add some bits of this down here as well. Oh, that's fun. So these colors are very likely to stick a lot more at the surface where we're adding them versus going deeper into the yarn. Okay, I wanna add some Cabernet. So we're gonna do like a full syringe, a little over five milliliters at that edge and at that edge, and that one spread more, and that's fine. We're just trying to treat things similarly-esque. And I'm trying to like think about the proportion of colors, because we've got a little bit more of the pink than the blue right now. Oh, I know what I'll do. I am going to mix a different blue. I'm gonna take this Caribbean blue that I have here, which was about uh, maybe 10 milliliters. And then I'm gonna take some fluorescent fuchsia and add it to it just a bit to kind of make a deeper blue. Yeah, now these colors will break, especially like as they spread, but see that gives us a more like Crayola type blue versus the more cyan color. And so maybe some of that will sort of strike in here that way with that color, even though it'll probably then like spread um, and maybe, I mean, maybe it would break, maybe it wouldn't, um, but maybe it'll give us that second blue kind of hue. And so, yeah, I wonder if we could do something like this with primary colors uh, where we could have different pigments starting out before they sort of all blend. But I'm now gonna do the same thing and we're gonna wait for 10 minutes and then we'll move the yarn and see if we want to add more pink because if it is too blue overall then we might add some more pink. There's some really cool stuff going on on some of the sides that I want to show you but I did save all of the dregs of all the cups. Anything that still had some stock solution back in since I had it mixed I put back in the stock bottle but everything left is here and we can add that on at the end if we want or I'll save it for another project. Gravity is so cool and adding some colors to the edge the way that it's sort of running down maybe like between two strands that are pushed up the corner that just looks so cool. I don't see as much of it on the side but there's a tiny of it in between those blues sort of reaching for each other. That deeper blue we mixed isn't really breaking yet which is cool because I mean we'll probably see some of those colors spread like when we lift and move but I think that's really cool. On the other side, we've got those fingers too, and they're actually starting to feather out. So it's like the dye is moving down and then sort of spreading in between multiple strands. I don't know, it's just so interesting. But anyway, I guess there's only four more minutes on the timer at this point, but we will still wait and then come back to move the yarn and maybe add more color. It's been 10 minutes, and now we're gonna move things. All right. Ooh, that is so pretty on its own. So the back side, which you can kind of see, does not have very much pigment on it. So if I were to take this and immediately go into, say, and so if I was gonna take this and immediately go steam it, uh, I would maybe want there to be some more color. I would say that what we have here is a lot more purple. It's not a very bright purple, um, but it's more of like a deep purple, and I am totally fine with that. Now, I have that backside up here mostly. Uh, things are not, are they even? Yeah, they're a little even. Let's go ahead and just sort of scrunch it. Sort of like we did before. Um, but leaving some of that exposed because we have this tiny bit of extra color and I'm gonna add it on just 
on to these areas and some of that may spread. It might give some like more deep blue quality to it, but I think that from here, the only thing I wanna do is add a little bit more acid. This is definitely more purple and I like that we still brought in some muted qualities to it because of like that using a little bit more of that Cabernet. Otherwise, using like Caribbean blue and fluorescent fuchsia slash purple pop, uh, we would end up with like something brighter overall. And I'm really enjoying where this is headed. But I need a lid. And now I'm gonna go let this sit outside for a couple of days and then we'll come back to steam set it. Now, there is a way we could be a little bit extra with this type of technique. We could take a color recipe, say one that involves three or four colors, take out each of the individual colors at the correct proportion for the recipe, and then pour them on separately, letting them bind a little bit before combining all together. And while there's some variation here based on how quickly different colors would strike to yarn, in theory, this would bring the average color we end up with to something that is a little bit more predictable than what I'm doing here when I'm doing it a little bit more randomly and by the seat of my pants. Well, I'm not wearing pants, by the seat of my skirt. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying the sort of like organic mixture of colors and layering it in this kind of way. And doing things cold process is a really great way to scale up more yarn dyeing because oftentimes it's faster to steam set than maybe it might be with one of these colors to kettle dye and wait for everything to cool. But anyway, we will see how things look in a couple of days. And Laura, I'm definitely gonna be sending you whichever colorway is my favorite. That's how I tend to do these lab partner videos. If I dye more than one colorway in the video, I send the one I'm most excited about to my lab partner. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Laura, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I can't guarantee that your lab partner video will come out on any specific date, but if you reach out to me with enough notice, I can try to get it as close as I can as my schedule allows to a birthday or some other date that has significance to you. But anyway, you'll find links down in the video description. It's the next morning and let's look at our yarn. I already checked <laughs> when I was outside. <laughs> so I know, all right, we've got a hint of some color left. It's unclear to me if it is some staining in there or what, but Enough of the color, yeah, there's some pinks there. That's not incredibly surprising, given that we used uh, fluorescent fuchsia and purple pop. But most of the color has absorbed, and so we're gonna go ahead and steam set the yarn now. I am gonna go ahead and steam set the yarn in two stages. Ooh, not because I'm particularly worried about color transfer from one colorway to another, which they're actually looking pretty similar right now. This is super pretty. Uh, but mainly if there's a tiny chance that like maybe some of the pink transfers and I don't have the yarn set up the same way. We tried so hard to keep these two skeins similar and I suppose there's still a chance that we could have some color transfer between the two of them uh, here in the steamer basket but I don't actually think that that would be a huge issue here. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam this for, ooh, I'll wait for it to get hot and then I'm gonna go ahead and steam for 40 minutes just for good measure. And then we will steam set the other yarn in the same steamer basket. I just removed the first colorway from the steamer basket. And now we're gonna take a look at this one, which definitely is a little bit more purpley, uh, but, Still has a lot of blue notes as well. And I'm also going to steam set this yarn in my steamer basket for 40 minutes. Now that the yarn has cooled, let's wash it. And I'm gonna be optimistic and try to wash everything together. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully there will be no regrets, but I'm feeling very, very optimistic. And all right, the first sign is a good one. I'm not seeing any color at all. 
in the water. And so now, add the 400 grams of yarn back in, and I think we're at about the end of the soap bottle. But, well, you can add some dish soap from it. I've been rinsing out this bottle to get the last little bit of soap for a while. But all right, let's see all the zip ties. When I'm washing yarn, I do try to hold it by the zip ties because that way we aren't introducing like tangling in. If I grip it in the middle and move it around, I could create more disorder, which is not ideal. But we're seeing no bleeding here at all. And so that's awesome. I'm now gonna go ahead and rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll look at the finished dry yarn. Here is the finished dry yarn. We have the yarn that we dyed in two separate containers, and then the yarn that we dyed combined into one container. And I would say that in both cases, we have colorways that are reasonably well matched. In this yarn, we see all the colors. We see some light patches. Uh, we see some of this that's probably Cabernet in similar spots. Similarly, over here, we've got like the blue, a bigger section, a smaller section, all in similar kind of areas. Now, they are not identical. So this is not like an identical match set like we might get if we had dyed a sock blank. But the matching is pretty good and I'm pretty impressed. The placement match here is not identical. We did the best we could. One of them has a little bit of a lighter patch, but they both feel very, very similar to one another. I feel elements in both of these that evoke uh, a similar feeling to it. I was gonna start to go into my spiel about how if you are gonna use both of these skeins into one larger project, you may want to alternate skeins every couple of rounds in case uh, there is a I mean, there are dye lot differences here, right? But in case it's a little, it could give a dramatic change when you shift from one to the other. But there also could be some asymmetry within this colorway itself. Because if you look at segments like right here, like here we've got some more blue, here we've got some more purple, which is not to say that this represents the first half of the yarn, this represents the second half of the yarn. Uh, there could be more randomness to it than that. But whenever you're doing something like this kind of technique, there is a chance that you could have, say, all of this like Cabernet that could be on one side of the skein, potentially. Uh, not necessarily, but just potentially. And so it may not make a big difference when you shift from one to the other if there is already asymmetry inherently in the skein. So I'm not sure if I'm making sense here, but hopefully this does make some sense. But if asymmetry in your yarn is a concern, not only can you blend uh, two different skeins together by you know, alternating every few rows or something just to blend it a little bit more, you could also uh, blend things from both sides. If you had a center pull ball, you could use the inside and outside. I probably wouldn't bother doing that personally, but it is something that you could conceivably do. When we dyed the two skeins together in one pan, uh, I would say the main difference we have here is that the color segments seem to be a little bit larger and they are a little bit less blended overall, probably because since the water to yarn ratio was not quite as big, uh, colors stayed were a little bit better where we originally put them versus spreading a little bit more. But we still absolutely have a softness here. Um, I feel like we've got more, I would say, variation within these skeins than we do the other ones, just because the color patches are a little larger. But it is still really pretty. Now that I've done this, I'm thinking of another experiment where I should try doing this kind of overall effect, but have three containers, two where I have a single skein, and a third where I have two. And I should try to dye all of them with the same proportional amount of colors to the amount of yarn that is in the containers to see how we can compare things. Because since I use different colors on this skein versus the more blue colorway that I had done first, I can't really compare the two except to say that here we did end up getting really good coverage on the yarn. And so 
that has me excited. Wow, I actually think that all of this yarn would work really, really well together in one project. I think that the four skeins wouldn't necessarily be a fade of like four skeins, but you could blend all of this together and create something really, really beautiful. Uh, and so I think that that is fun as well. But when it comes down to our all together versus separate colors, I think my favorite today is these. I just like the uh, that they're a little bit more subtle and the like blurpleness to them. I was concerned they'd be a little bit too blue, but I feel the blurple. I feel the blurple in there. And so, Laura, these are the skeins that I'm going to send to you. And I really hope that you will love them. Laura, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I had a blast dyeing this yarn for you. And again, if you at home would like to learn how you can become a lab partner, go and check out the links in the video description, or you can head straight to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and check out the listings over there. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and the fact that this appears to be somewhat scalable is really, really great. Uh, I've enjoyed this kind of effect for a while, and the thought that, gee, I can measure out dye in different proportions and do it in different batches and get something that feels somewhat similar is just super, super exciting to me. Especially if I sort of pay attention to the pattern that I do on the yarn initially. But anyway, please make sure you're subscribed to the Covenant Tutorials YouTube channel Turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video, and you can consider becoming a member of the channel for fun loyalty badges and custom Chemnitz emotes that you can use in live stream chats and in the comments section below my videos. Thank you so much for watching.